I don't think I really tell um, about Chester. Yeah. It's a, it's, I promise. <laughs> it's a, it's kind of a weird one, and that's probably why I don't tell it very often. Because, well, I mean, you'll kind of know. So we, when we did our first, our first tour, like our first real tour tour, where like we opened, like first out of three bands. And uh, we were the we obviously first is we were opening act, and the other two bands. Um, well, I'll say this: the, the the headlining act, who shall not be named. <laughs> they um, they had two buses, and they had all this gear, and they had like roadies, and they had a tour manager, and they had two hairstylists. <laughs> um, and. They, if there were two dressing rooms, they'd take two dressing rooms. If there were a hundred dressing rooms, they'd take a hundred dressing rooms. God knows we did not have a hundred dressing rooms. But they, they would leave, I mean, they'd just take up everything and they'd leave nothing for the opening acts at all. And they would, they would scream at their crew in the middle of their sets and they fired this one guy and left him in the parking lot after a show. Just, just mean, mean stuff. And, and then during that time, our, our first single, as we started to make our way over to the West Coast, our first single, One Step Closer, started, started to get on the radio. Yeah. And, uh, we were pumped, man. We were running around. We were so excited. I remember we drove into Chester's dad's house in Arizona, and the DJ, just as we drove up, the DJ got on and he said this is a brand new band and apparently the singer is a local guy from Tempe, Arizona. This is Linkin Park with One Step Closer to play the song. And we were freaking out. I mean, we ran in the house. He's like, Pops, it's on the radio. Turn on the radio. In Chester's not so quiet voice. Um, so yeah, so fast forward, we ended the tour um, and you know, our next tour wasn't much better, surprisingly. And the tour after that got a little bit better and a little bit better. And um, eventually, you know, we learned to like really take care of our openers because we were like, man, we were an opener once and that sucked. And like when people, you know, um, open for us, like we want to make sure that they know they're welcome and we give them space. And so first of all, can we please make some not noise for Diane Broco who opened tonight? <laughs> I was saying De Don, Don Brocco for a long time. Don Brocco. Um, those guys are great. Really nice guys, by the way. Um, but anyway, so fast forward to a, a story here in New York really quick. These guys, we were playing a show. I think it was like Roseland Ballroom. I think we were like headlining that one. Like we had gone from opening it one year to the very next year we were headlining it. And... This guy, I think it was Chester, came to the door of the bus, and I was in there, and he's like, "Hey, man, uh, do you mind if I bring? Do you remember this guy?" And I was like, "No, who is that?" He's like, "It's the, it's one of the guys from that band that we opened for, from like way the very first tour, and he's here." And I was like, "Oh shit, are we gonna like, like, what do we say to this guy?" And he's like, "He's like, I don't know. He seems like he's like." being pretty cool so let's just have him come in and we'll just you know like be this would we'll be cool be cool and i'm like yeah sure so he comes in and the guy's like hey man like you know i just want to say congratulations like on all your success that's so cool and we're like oh thank you that's really nice of you to like come in and so on and he and i was and at that moment i was thinking like this guy's actually like being really cool and that's just really nice and then he says you know i listen i think back about all those times and how popular you guys got. And I think it should have been us. <laughs> I swear to God. He said it should have been us. And Chester and I looked at each other and we were like, yo, this is a moment where you can like beat this guy's ass. Like, wow, what a thing to say. And, and I looked at him and he just looked at the guy and he's like, yeah, man, like, Good luck to you. I hope you. I hope it works out. Like you know, you're not. You're still playing music. It's all good. Like, just keep going for it. And he's like, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. It means a lot. And we said goodbye to him. And let him go. And Chester came back in the door. And and I mean, I think the bottom line is like that's the kind of guy that 
Chester could be sometimes. Yeah. Like, just like, wow, this, this most super offensive thing. Just, he said such a weird, offensive thing. And Chester was just like, nah, man, that's cool. <laughs> Make some noise for Chester fucking And like I said, these shows, I, I, I want you to understand like my perspective on it is 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 modeled. Chester! Chester! this I'll say this I've actually said this like all over the world in interviews my my perspective on Chester and what happened was it, it has been shaped in a way from the way that New Yorkers celebrated Biggie after he passed because it wasn't on some like sad stuff it was like you guys celebrated the man you celebrated we got years with the music we got years with a legend like it's a beautiful thing and Chester was one of the greatest singers in music of all time and he was a good dude he was a friend of mine he was a good person and I just feel grateful to have all those great years with him and I know you guys feel the same so on this next song, if you could please sing Chester's parts as loud as you can. Woo! 